Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, let us go before the throne of grace and prayer. Father, we honor you, we bless you, and we thank you for this opportunity that you have given us once again to come before the throne of grace. We honor you, Lord, because of who you are and all that you have done. I pray and plead the blood of Jesus right now, Lord, that you bless us, that we have a mind to receive thy word. Help the people, God, that they may stay focused in on the moment, Lord. Forgive me if it's anything that I have done, said, or thought on that is not pleasing in your sight, Lord. I ask you to forgive me that I may have my mind renewed for the purpose, Lord God, of being able to proclaim thy word to thy people and not, Lord God, find myself weighted down with things that you are not pleased with in any way, form, or fashion. Bless the saints, Lord God, that they may stay so focused in on the moment. They may remove any distractions. Bless them that they may stay into the word, Lord God, for the purpose of growth. To those that are with us right now, let us prepare, Lord God, to receive thy word. To those that will be joining us, protecting us, protect them that they may get to a safe place. And to those that will not be with us, be merciful to them, Lord, that at a later date they may be able to view this message. Lord, we just want to bless you. Thank you for all that you are and who you are and all that you have done. So we ask you, Lord, to bless us that we may stay focused in on the word, that we may grow in thee. This prayer we ask the Holy Spirit to deliver to the Father, for it is both in the name and under the blood of our Lord and our Savior. For you are Jesus. You are the Christ. If you agree with that prayer, say amen. Okay, saints, we found out what the issue was. So it was a minor glitch that was in the, um, you know, it's, it's something that anybody can do. I had the pad upside down. Okay, user error. Use it. Use user error so that's what it was i had the pad upside down and that's why i was showing everything <laughs> so please forgive me guys i'm getting this thing together but nevertheless we're going into x um of course x we're in we're starting x um if you will x the 25th chapter but what we want to do is i want to go back as we often do and i want to touch bases on that which we studied last week guys and so this is where we were last week as we studied the word of god um, X, um, we, we ended on X, the 24th chapter. We finished up 24 last week. So I want to just go back and briefly touch that and move forward. But this is what the word says in X 24 and 22. It says, and when Felix had heard these, heard these things, having more perfect knowledge of the way he deferred, he deferred them and said, when Lazarus, the chief captain shall come down, I will I will know the uttermost of this matter. And he, and he commanded a centurion to keep Paul and to let him have liberty and that he should forbid, forbid none of his acquaintances to minister or come unto him. And after, after certain days, when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, which was a Jewish, he said to Paul and her said to Paul and heard him concerning the faith he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith of Christ and as a and as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, go thy way for this time when I have a convenient season I will, I will call for thee he hoped also that money should have been given him of Paul that he may loosen him. Wherefore he sent for him the often and communed with him. But after two years, Procus Festus came into Felix's room and Felix, willing to show the Jews a pleasure, left Paul bound. Now, so what we have um, last week, what we were studying with, as you can begin to see that Felix, after he heard the whole situation that was taking place, Felix decided, um, okay, I'm going to hold this man bound because they wanted to kill him. They wanted to kill him. So Felix said, I'm going to keep him bound pretty much in a witness protection program that God had Paul in. And so what he was saying is, do not refrain any of his friends or acquaintances from coming to see him. He is he has done nothing wrong. We learned that, um, I think it was like in 20, 2021, uh, 20 or 21, we learned that Paul hadn't done anything wrong. So Felix was saying, no, no, we're not going to hold him as a criminal. That's where our law system come from today. It's based pretty much on the Roman system and how it was that one is innocent until proven guilty. And so what Felix is saying is he has not um, done anything wrong. And so, yeah, you can come in to see him and things of that sort. So what he wanted to do, he said, well, if any of them had a problem, Bring the people that had the problem. 
Make, let them have the accusation against me. Let them prove their point. And that has been a thing that has been going through with Paul and also with Felix. He is saying to him, okay, if you guys can prove what you're saying, I have some grounds to do what you are asking. Because what they wanted to do, they wanted him dead. And so, of course, that caught the attention. I mean, dead? I mean, not put in prison forever, but like dead, dead? And so that's what they wanted. And and with the point I was making to you is that's what the um that's what the devil wants for you today. He um you that stand up for the name of Christ Jesus, he wants you dead. He don't even want you to be in a state to where you are um um uh, where he can sit down and reason with you. You can only reason with people that are reasonable. But when you have unreasonable people, you cannot reason with them no way, form, or fashion. And so what these people were, they wasn't hearing nothing Paul had to say. Nothing. They just wanted him dead because he touched the thing that Paul was saying. I touched that very thing that bothered you guys, the resurrection of the dead. And so what we did is we went back. What was it that made them so angry about it? Well, we went back into Acts the 23rd chapter, verses 5 through 9, and we learned that Paul, when he learned that there was a division in the ranks, the um, Sadducees against the Pharisees, um, what he did is he split the division because the Sadducees believed what Paul believed, believed, which was the resurrection of the dead, the raising of the dead. So they said, there's nothing wrong with this man. And so they divided them, said, um, them being divided, went into an argument and they're fighting. So you can see how um, well Paul was versed in the word of God and why he was so dangerous. Listen, the devil is bothered about a ignorant Christian. But the devil fears a knowledgeable Christian. Now, how does one become knowledgeable in the word of God? Well, God's word tells us, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the words of truth. Now, how do you rightly divide the words of truth? You study. You study. Because when people study things, they take things out of context. And when it's taken out of context, you can show when you're knowledgeable of the word. No, that's not right. And here's why. And so Paul was very knowledgeable of the word of God. And so when they came after him with things, he was able to correct them via the word of God. And so there's nothing they can do against the truth. When you are um, standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with a person and they have nothing but lies on their side and you are able to not only speak the truth but show, okay, this is what the word says right here and these are the things that um, I did. So where was I wrong? You have to learn to stay. Keep the camera still on the question. Don't get caught in the weeds of your emotions because when a person do not have facts with them, they want to get you into an emotional state because when you're an emotional person, we have learned when you are emotional, you can easily be led. God wants us to be led, not driven. So when you're in an emotional state, you can be driven, not led. I'm sorry. Let me correct that. When you're in an emotional state, you can be driven. So a person can get you all out of yourself because they get your blood pressure up. And now you're saying things that you was not going to say. You're frustrated. You're frustrated. And you all of these things. Calm down. Keep the camera still. Go back to the point. Make them answer the question. Because as long as they can keep you in confusion, they're going to win. For the word tells us confusion is of the devil. And so what took place with that is Proculus Festus had come. Now he was ranked over Felix. And so that's what we, um, we're doing because we're, they were doing because what was taking place was Paul was a Roman citizen and they wanted to kill a Roman citizen. So there was great division. But remember, um, Felix, Festus, all of these guys were politicians. And so only thing a politician want to do is keep the peace. Because the province which they were in, they wanted to keep the peace for the reason of they didn't want no disturbance, which means they would have had to answer to Caesar. And so if you can't do your job, then you lose your job. And so that's why they wanted to keep peace or, or either do what they had to do in order to crush anything that were raised up that would cause problems. So that's what was taking place, guys, in the end of 24, Acts the 24th chapter. And we're moving into new information now in Acts the 25th. But remember, guys, Paul challenged them. If y'all have something to say against me, if you have an accusation and you have this against me, you can prove it here. I'm standing right here. Let's go. And so that's what he did. He challenged them. And as Felix watched, they were not able to do anything to prove Paul wrong. So they became even more angrier. And so when you stay with the facts, or stay with the word of God, 
I promise you, the people fight will not be with you. It will be with the enemy. So the devil, I'm going to say with God, that's what will happen. Your enemy will be fighting God, not you. As long as you stay into the word of God and obey God's word. Now, what was taking place there, we move forward and, and Acts, the 25th chapter. It says, now when Felix was come into the province, after three days, he ascended from Caesarea to Jude, um, Jerusalem. So what he said, remember, now, um, I'm, um, Felix was there. Now, Festus has come into, remember, he was a, a pretty powerful politician. Now, Festus has come into that province, meaning that general area. Festus comes into that area, and, and he's going to see, okay, what is taking place? Because anytime you have a, a high-ranking um, person that comes in, it will be the, the dog and pony show. Everybody, um, they're going to meet the person that's in charge in that area. They want to be able to speak with them. What is going on in the province? Fill me in on things that was going on. And so that's what it's saying. Now Festus um, was come into a province, so he came into that area. After three days, he ascended from Caesarea to Jerusalem. So in his travels, he came, um, he came to Jerusalem from Caesarea. What was he doing? He wanted to speak with this situation to find out what is going on. So again, you had the higher ranking, um, the hierarchy that came in because Festus was above Felix. So he wanted to know, okay, what, what do we have going on? Which was no problem. Remember, Felix wrote a letter to him and filling him in on what was going on here, what was taking place, which became very interesting. And as we go forward with this, you're going to find it's going to be much more interesting with um, the higher ups. They want to learn this thing. But something I want you to keep in mind, Felix was very knowledgeable of the circumstance and situation that we was looking at. Again, before we move forward, we're going back into 24, look at what he said um, in verse number... Um, verse number... Okay, verse number 22. And when Felix heard these things, having more perfect knowledge of that way, he deferred them. So what he's saying is Felix knew about this thing, about um, Christ Jesus and all this that was taking place. Felix knew how if you would, tender that situation was. If you had a, a sore or something or something is inflamed on you, it, it becomes tender. If you touch it, it immediately has a reaction. So when, you, when it came to touching Jesus Christ or that situation, it became a reaction. That was a trigger point for those people. And that's what Paul was saying. Even in all of this you're looking at, I am fine. I lined up with the, the prophets. I lined up with the law. I lined up with Roman um, law. I lined up with all of this. And he said, but touching the resurrection of the dead, that's what made all of y'all lose y'all mind. That's what triggered all of them. So that's what the problem was. So, and that's what we're saying. So Felix came in from Caesarea to Jerusalem. He says, and now when he came in, remember, that, um, being a powerful man, the dignitaries, everybody around wants to come and speak with him. Because remember, the higher rank a person is that come in your presence, the more they can do, the more poor they have. So if you can't get nothing done by this person, but this person comes in and he says, yes, well, he will surpass or overrule this person here. Felix was here. Festus was here. Okay. And so that's what we find here. It says, now again, Festus came into that, that province and checking into things, it says, Then the high priest and the chief of the Jews informed him against Paul and besought him. So what they said is, they came and gave him the rundown. Here's what's going on. Here's what everything is upset about. It. Here's why there's such confusion in this province. Remember, these guys was masters at sucking up. Because when you went back into 22, when they, they had the, the person to begin to speak, on behalf, remember, they brought in a spokesperson and he was saying, you know, he began to butter up Felix and tell him all about how good he is. And you you've done a good job in your province and all of these things. But this pestilent fellow causing all these problems. Well, now one is over Felix and now the same crew has come now and they're speaking to Festus. And so that's what he's saying. The high priest and all of them came um, to inform him. They wanted to give him the rundown of Paul. Now, here is something very important that applies to your life. Be it your supervisor, be it a person that's boss over your supervisor, be it people that is in your, your work vicinity, your community, um, anywhere around, there's always going to be someone that's going to put a word out on you. There's always going to be someone that's going to try to get the jump and try to make people think what they want them to think about you. 
They're going to tell whatever lie they need to tell. They're going to cause whatever confusion they need to cause. They're going to do, and they're going to try to draw a picture of you that people may be able to judge you by the picture that they have drawn. And all through this, that's what they have been doing with Paul. They are trying to get to the important people first so that they can all change the narrative or make the narrative what they want it to be. And that's why they were saying, then the high priest and the chief of the Jews informed him against Paul. So they went on and gave their opinion to try to have his, to try to have his mindset to think of Paul this certain way against Paul and besought him. So what did they want from him? Why was they trying to fill his head or twist his head, if you will? Why was they trying to cause such division and um, division or trying to give a per, uh, personal, their personal opinion on the heart of that person? Now, I want to um, stress this and reiterate this, please. Be careful with you trying to draw a picture of somebody else to somebody else, a wrong picture. The word of God is clear. God says, do not be deceived. God will not be mocked for what one sows. That's what they will also reap. So if you are one that spread malicious information about someone, it's going to happen to you. But if you are that person when malicious information comes, you say, well, hold on. Let's hear this thing. Let's hear this thing. Many times I, 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 I even checked me about it because my wife checked me about this even a, a, a couple of hours ago. I was looking at a certain situation that was taking place and I had a judgment that I was making. She said, you don't even know. So, I, okay, I repent. I was wrong. That was judgment. And you can see that's what was taking place here. You have, you have to be careful not to make a judgment of a person because what someone else has said about that person. You may not know. That may be the best friend that God has purposely tailored for you. But the devil is trying to already skew your opinion about the person that when the person is coming to you in good standing, you start looking at them shady. Because you listen to what someone else said about that person. Get to know the person for yourself. Now, yes, you want to be cautious. You want to be wise about the situation. Um, if you don't know a person, proceed with caution. But until they give you a reason to distrust them, um, as the saying goes, you can only have a first impression one time. So if you just, as you just watch the person and speak with them and just watch, because one thing about a liar, a liar is a liar. And if you don't know a person and you, they just moved in to the area or what have you, and you listen to them and you can clearly see they embellish a lot of things, or you just find out and see that they're a busybody. No, you're not judging. You just have observed um, the person and this is what you have come up with. And so again, that's what the high priest was trying to do with Paul. And they was uh, trying to set the stage. Now remind you, they're trying to set the stage because they're asking, a, um, they're saying, but they desired something of him. Of who? Festus. Well, what did they want? It says, and desired favor against him that he would send for him, at, send for him to Jerusalem, lying, lying, waiting in the way to kill him. You don't even know this man. And you're trying to get this man to be accessory to a murderer. Do that tell you how crazy these people were? And see, that's the problem you have when people, um, when you become so laser focused into getting the person, as the saying goes, do not bite off your nose to spite your face. Because you have to be careful. Don't be so mad at a person that you become deranged in your mind that you're not even thinking what you're going to do. People are watching you and you are so locked into what you're going to do, you're not even, not even aware that people are watching what you do. Have you ever seen a person doing that locked into something? They're looking at something, not paying attention and things going on around them. Maybe walked out into the street and somebody had to save their life. Something to that magnitude. And so what was taking place there is they don't bottle up Festus for a reason. You got to be careful of the person that's coming and petting you in the back. Remember how they did Felix? Oh, noble Felix, that great and honorable man. When a person comes to hype you up, just know that they're trying to tag you down. And so he says, and desired favor against him. So what favor did they want for Felix? I'm going to say from Festus. This is what they wanted from Festus, that he was sent he was sent for him to Jerusalem. So what he's saying is, why don't you send for Paul? Instead of you coming to Paul, you send for him. So send for him. And what we would do, we would lie and wait. We will lie and wait in the way to kill him. So on his way to come to you, we'll kill him. And we can get rid of two birds with one stone. See, 
what we can do is we can kill him. You don't have to worry about the judgment process and there will not be no uproar in the city. See, in a mental person mind, it makes sense to them. But a normal person like, man, did you just skip over the part that you're telling me to be accessory to a murder? Did you just, how did you just, well, that, that ain't that big. I mean, you, you set him up. But I assure you, I will assure you, the moment that you do such a thing, your name will be the first one that will be brought up. And you're the one that's going to be charged because they're going to say, well, yeah, this is what he told us to do. How we know he was going to be coming here on this day and time. And see, in order for me to know that, he had to tell me because only he knew when he was going to call for him. See the point, guys? And so that's what they was trying to get him to do. Now, that is their modus operandi. Because remember back um, when, um, back in the early parts of 24, when Paul, um, when they had came, the spokesperson along with the, the, the chief captain, and those guys came. Remember, if you've been walking with us in this study, remember what those guys were doing? They um, came and they wanted, I would say that the spokesperson was telling a lot of lies. And the chief captain, which is the religious people, agreed with them. They was agreeing with them. Therefore, they become accessory to the crime that is being committed. Well, now they're trying to do the same thing. See, the devil don't have no tricks. He just rehashes old ones. And so he's trying to do now the exact same thing. In verse number two, he is buttering up Festus like they buttered up Felix. In verse number three, what they're doing is they're trying to get him, um, Festus, to be accessory to the crime just as they tried to do with Felix. So you can see, guys, a liar is going to lie. A busybody is going to be busy. So if you find a person doing a thing, if they did it to you, that's because they don't did it to somebody else. That's just who they are. But you should know them that labor amongst you. Again, Paul committed no crimes. But yet they trying to, They don't even want to be heard. They don't even want him heard. They don't even want to speak with him. Why? Because if you are able to get both people in the room at the same time, always be leery of a person that do not want to get both parties in the room at the same time. Because if a person do not want both parties in the room at the same time, they do not want the truth. Because even if both of them are going to say opposite things, which they are going to, you are intelligent enough that when you listen to it, you know whose story sounds like it makes sense. And then you know the one that just sounds plain crazy. See, to a liar, his lie sounds good to him or to her or to them. But when someone of a level, a level of mind listens to the situation, they say, hold on. Well, if that's true, then how is this? It doesn't make sense. So you have two different types of people that you deal with in life. You have um, people that are general people, and then you have people that are specific people. And it's funny when they come together, because my wife is a specific person. Details matter to her, every little detail. Me, I'm generalizing. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, we was at the store and everything was good. No, 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 what was you at the store for? A different store make I was at the store, I was at the store. No, it matters. Because you, okay, I was at the store, I was get, picking up some candy. Well, I sent you to get some bread. What was you doing getting candy? And you came back without the bread. So the point is being made, when you begin to hear the details, you'll begin to find out where a person deviated off of what really was. And so that's what was taking place. So they desired favor against him. So what they wanted, the favor of Festus, what was the favor? That he was sent for, he was sent, uh, he was sent for Paul to Jerusalem. And then he would let them have the jump on him so that they can kill him. But that's this answer. <laughs> Can you imagine that? So I can't you listen. This is what I want you to do. Now, I, you know, then Festus answered that Paul should be kept at Caesarea and that he himself would depart shortly thither. So what he is saying is, remember, Festus went from Caesarea to Jerusalem. Why? He was there talking to Felix. Well, they came to talk to um, Festus, the, the, the Jewish leaders. And so they want Festus to send for Paul and tell Paul to come to Jerusalem so they can jump him and kill him while he's on his way to Jerusalem. And that solves Felix and Festus' problem. Only problem is both Felix and Festus saying no. So Festus sent word, leave Paul still. Do not bring him here. I'm coming to him. See, Festus, he really wanted to get to the bottom of this matter. So he's saying, I'm coming to him again. See what he says? Um, but Festus answered 
that Paul should be kept at Caesarea and that he himself would depart shortly thither. So what he's saying is, leave him there. I'm shortly coming to you. I'm not going to be too long, but I'm going to be there. So just leave him be. Now, what was Paul's situation? Paul was in a pretty much house of rest, but he had liberty with his friends and things of that sort. You know what? You have to make the best of the situation that you're in. God don't do complaining. God does not like complaining. See, the more you complain and murmur, God pulls away from that. That's why you feel so distant from the Father when you murmur and complaining. That's why the Word tells you to do all things without murmuring and disputing. Don't argue about it. See, what moves God, God loves to be praised. So even if your situation is not desirable, you praise God and you honor Him. You worship Him. You th I know I don't like the situation that I'm in. I mean, all of us can think back at a job that you felt like that was beneath you. But thank God I got a job. I could be one that is that is unemployed. Yeah, my boss may be a butt, but God wants you, wants you near that boss. Because God says, well, who else going to save him? Who else am I going to use to get him? You closest to him. And so that's what it was. You have to learn to look at the situation and quit complaining about it and see it as an opportunity for you to grow the kingdom of God. Now, remember, because when you sit down and think about Paul's job, one of the greatest books in the New Testament that we as believers love to read is um, Ephesians, the sixth chapter. And I think that's the fifth chapter. That's the armor of God. Put it on the whole armor of God. We love to read that. But do you know Paul's situation when he was writing about the armor of God? He was chained in a prison to two soldiers. And so instead of crying about, I shouldn't be in this dungeon, Lord, all I've done is served you. Don't remind God about your circumstance or else God will remind you about your circumstance. If you want God to go back and think about all the things you've done wrong before God got a hold of you, then this is just cause for what you did. So what Paul did is he sat down. He said, I can't go nowhere. And so he began to look at the Roman soldiers. I imagine that conversation. Can you imagine that, Paul, looking at the Roman soldiers? Well, why do you have that on? Well, this is for such and such. Okay, put on the helmet of salvation. Well, why you got that big thing? Well, this is, okay, the shield of faith. Paul started writing this stuff down. He took the natural and then converted it into the spiritual. And so what I'm saying is, quit complaining and murmuring about your circumstance and situation. Look at the natural situation and see what it is that God is trying to tell you in the spiritual. See, you can take the mess and give it to Jesus and he'll make a message out of it. But if you are one that constantly whining and complaining, you're taking the message and making it a mess. And so that's what was taking place. They said, no. So uh, Festus is saying, no, leave him be. I don't care what gets to you. You leave him be till I get there. So that's a stabilizing force there. He has gotten um, the situation. He has brought it up under control because what he is saying is you need to listen to what's taking place. Now, they wanted him to bring sin for Paul. No, he said, I'm going to Paul. Now, there is confusion here, and Festus just wants to get to the bottom of the situation. Now, what is wrong? Because you can see that Festus is going by the Roman playbook, and I'm going to show you why. Because Felix did the exact same thing that Festus did. Look at verse number 20, verse number five of me. So he is sitting down. He have already told him, leave him still. I'm coming to him. He says, let him therefore, he says, let them therefore, say he, which among you are able to go down with me and accuse, him, accuse this man if there be any wickedness in him. Do you see what Festus is saying? No, 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 no. I see what y'all want to do. Y'all want me to sin for him so you can lay in wait and kill him. But I'm saying no because this is an innocent man unto proven guilty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to him. Now, you all that's able, I need y'all to come and go with me so you can make the accusation to the face. See, I told you a person that wants truth, what they're going to do is they're going to get both parties in the room together. Why? Because you will be able to find out exactly what is going on. And see, that's exactly what uh, Felix did. That's what Felix did back in the 24th chapter, the early parts. Felix realizing what had happened. Felix said, well, okay, you that have an accusation, come and make the accusation against them. So that must be a Roman guideline. And that's how it is with us with the law. You can't just um, say a person did something. You can make an accusation, but you got to prove it. A person is, was supposed to be innocent and to proving guilty. So, because if not, 
Anybody can make an accusation against you. And then it becomes law. And so, well, again, Festus is saying, no, leave him be. Let him stay where he's at. And then um, I'm going to say, he says, let them therefore say he. So any of, the, any of you all that's here that is saying this, which among you are able, any of you that can, because remember, there was uh, a group of people there. Some are old, some are, you know, cannot make the trip. But Felix is saying, or Festus is saying, any of you that can make the trip, I want you to go down with me. With me denotes I'm going to be with you. So go down with me and accuse this man. I need you to accuse him. I need to hear what the accusation is. And I want to hear why you're saying this. They just told Felix. Remember in verse number two, they had told him. They already made the accuse. Uh, they accused him. But what he wants in verse five is you to go down to this man's face and make these accusations. Because I can say anything about you and people say, well, that's right, until people hear you. I often say to sports, uh, sports fans, especially fanatics about their team, a fanatic about their team, you look at them, they follow their team through, um, for this purpose, we're going to say football, okay? They follow their team through um, training camp, and they follow their team through the preseason, and they, you know, the first thing they say, a training camp, and they watch them practice with them. We got a great team, and we're going to be strong this year. I can tell you, this is amazing. That all they do is they talk about their team. Well, you don't know how good your team is until you get an opponent on the field. And see, smart teams will say, okay, let us scrimmage another team. So we can get an idea where the holes at in our um, teams or our defense or our offense so we can fix it before the season start. OK, that's why they have preseason scrimmages. They want to just get a feel of what the team going to look like and how to make the adjustments and sharpen it before the real thing start. Well, what Festus does here is he's saying, what I need to do, I need you guys. Is, I don't heard you guys. And y'all sound like y'all got a tight story. But already in the back of Festus' mind, something is going on. Because Festus has already been reported to. Remember, Felix wrote him a long letter. Remember, Felix wrote the letter to Festus in 24. A long letter to Festus to let him know what was coming his way. So Festus can be prepared for what was coming. So Festus had already heard from a reliable, trustworthy person, Felix. And Felix said, I find nothing wrong with this man. I find where well, he did nothing wrong. And now Festus comes in and he hears these people that as doing nothing but making accusations. So how does this square? So Festus don't know these people, but Festus do know Felix. And so what he's saying is, I'm going to roll with Felix until I can hear for this myself. See, you got to know the people that labor amongst you. You have to know the people, the ones that's known for exaggerating, the ones that's known for flat out lying, the ones that's known for embellishing, and the ones that's known for being a straight shooter. See, when you begin to stand with that person, you will find out that you are able to go forward and say, okay, I don't know who's telling the truth here, but I'm going to lean this way until I'm proven different, until proven wrong. And so that's what you're going to have to do. That's the way we're going to have to go with this, guys. And this is where we end up at verse number six. This is what he says. He says, And when he had tarried among them more than ten days, he went down unto Caesarea, and the next day, setting on the judgment seat, commanded Paul to be brought. So what he said is, Now for ten days, he have heard these people with their accusations against Paul. And so now he don't, I told him, Okay, I don't heard enough. Get your best. If they are able, bring them down. I'm going to sit on the judgment seat that you are able to make your accusation against this man because it's unfair for me to just listen to what you guys say and not hear his part of the story because Festus hadn't heard Paul. Felix did, but Festus have not. So what he is saying is, I want to make sure, I want to make sure that I'm getting this thing right because there's a lot at stake here because this is a Roman soldier. I'm going to say a Roman citizen. This is a Roman citizen. And I have to answer to Caesar if this thing does not happen here. So what you're going to have to do is understand. That's what he is saying. After all, he don't heard everything they had to say. He said, okay, now let me bring you, um, you have a right to face your accusers. All you have to do is put two of them in the room and just listen to them. You will know who's solid on what they're saying. Or you know the one that's embellishing and telling lies. Because no matter how well or how tight the lie is, there's going to be a kink in the armor where it will not line up. 
where it will not, uh, don't, something don't fit here. And it's just innate in us. God will put something in us to where we're able to say, you know, hold on, something don't feel right here. Something is not jiving here, guys. And so that's what you'll have, and that's what you'll begin to deal with and go through that. So that's what Felix was saying here. Again, what Festus was saying here. He says, and when he had tarried amongst them, um, amongst them more than 10 days, so a minimum of 11 days, he had heard your accusations. And I'm sure because these were political people, they was telling him how this is disrupting the um, atmosphere here and how this can cause great uproars and things of that sort and all of the reasons why he should let them kill him. And he is saying after 10 days, he went down unto Caesarea. Okay, now we are going from Jerusalem to Caesarea. He reversed it because they wanted to send Paul from Caesarea to Jerusalem and kill him. But no, what we're going to do, we all going to go together. To Caesarea from Jerusalem. And he said, and the next day, he says, and the next day, sitting on the judgment seat of judgment seat, commanded Paul to come down. Fe um, Festus went and stood in his proper position. I have gone from a person that's talking to you now to judge. He sat in his popular place. The place where he's going to make the decision. It's no longer you have a right to talk. When I say shut up, you shut up. Now, a judge. If he's at home and you just talking to him and you're talking and he's telling you to be quiet and you don't have to do nothing he say. But once he sits on that throne room, once he go into there and sits on his judge seat, when a judge says, shut up, you shut up or you will be held in contempt of court. Which means what comes after that is um, what the judge decides to do with you from there. And so that's exactly what was taking place here, guys. That's what we was beginning to deal with here. And so you will find out right there, each and every step of the way, you are finding, you are finding why they were, um, why it was that they was trying to get to, um, get to Festus before Festus did what he did. But thank God Festus was a level-headed person and not easily swayed it into people um, or being pressured into doing something. It's amazing what people can do to people when they pressure them into doing the thing that they ought not or uh, pressure them into doing the thing or trying to carry favor or trying to um, build them up because they want something from them. If a person always trying to build you up because they want something from you, that's of the devil because that's manipulation. And the word of God tells us manipulation is of the devil. And so if you're manipulating, you're doing the devil's work, your deeds are no good. Even if you want the good thing, you're manipulating. So you're using a bad thing to get the good thing, which makes the good thing now a bad thing because it's ill-gotten gain. So what we're going to do, we're going to pick up, guys, um, next week this, we just pray that something was said tonight that would be beneficial to you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you and honor you for the time that we have had in your word. Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus and pray, Lord, that you bless us, that we May take the word that we have heard tonight and apply it to our life. Do not let the saints, Lord, allow this word to be wasted. But help them, Lord, that they may take it and tie it to their hearts. That they may act on it, Lord, understanding that the word of God, things that was written over 2,000 years ago, have been brought into today's term and shown how it applies to each and every last one of us today. Your word shall not return void, just as you said it would not. Oh, Father, bless us that we take thy word very serious, that we apply it to our lives, because the same devil, the same demons that was back then causing the issues, concerns, and problems is the same devil and the same demons that roams the earth today. So if they did it then, they'll do it now. So if it worked back then, what you did, Lord, back then, it works now. So help us to take the word of God and apply it to our lives, that we may be able to grow. Thank you, Father, for hearing this prayer. I believe by faith that you have already honored this request. For I ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you um, have been one that is here with us, and I, I never get tired when I'm in Bible study or preaching the, the gospel. I do not get tired of making this, uh, this invitation. That's the whole purpose of you as a Christian, me as a Christian. The main, the main thing is to proclaim the word of God, make it simple that someone that do not know Jesus may have a desire to know him as their Lord and Savior or someone who has walked away may come to their senses and get back in line. So I make this bold um, 
offer to anyone that's out there. If you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior and would like to know him as your Lord and Savior, I would like to walk you through God's plan of salvation. Or if you were one that once knew Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you turned and walked away, and now you would like to rededicate your life to Christ, I want to walk you through God's plan of rededication. Pray with me, with head bound. Just say, Father, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this door that is open before me. I, right now, of my own free will, choose to walk through this door, the door of opportunity, of salvation in Christ Jesus. I start, Lord, by repenting of the life of sin that I have been living. I want to say, I'm sorry, Lord, for living your life my way. If you, Jesus, will come and cleanse my life, if you, Jesus, will come into my life, I will serve you the rest of the days of my life. Oh, Lord, I ask you to forgive me for how I have been acting. Forgive me for the way I have been thinking. Forgive me, Lord, for the way I have been speaking. If you would do that for me, Lord, and come into my life and sit on my heart, I will serve you. So with that said, right now, by my own free will, I submit my life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I ask you, Jesus, to come into my life, sit on the throne of my heart, and rule it. I submit my will unto yours. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I say welcome to the family of Almighty God. Welcome home. We pray that something was said tonight that was beneficial to you. Now, you may ask the question, what do I do now? I've given my life to Christ. What do I do? Find a good Bible-believing church and sit down up under the teachings of God's Word and take it in that you may be able to grow. Now, you may say, I don't know what one of those are right now because I'm, this is new to me. Well, stay here with us on this channel or on this page, and what we'll do is continue teaching the Word of God. But as you grow in Christ Jesus, you need to be at a place to where you can sit with some saints and be able to talk with them, shake hands, give a hug to your brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, you, what did you say with that? Say, I want to come and visit you. I want to give a visit to Fern Foundation. Well, we're located at 1851 Highway 66 South in the city of Kernersville in the state of North Carolina. Now, um, we would love for you to come visit with us, but I, I have to give you um, a warning. This is a disclaimer. This Sunday is our Focus on Your Family Sunday. So we're not going to be in the sanctuary. So do not come this Sunday. Because if you came this Sunday... No one's going to be there. So, guys, understand that this is our Focus on Your Family Sunday. This is Focus on Your Family Sunday. So, we're not going to be in the sanctuary, but we would love to see you online. So, if you would be, you know, that, guys. And so, there, that's what we say. So, if, besides this Sunday, come visit us. Located at 1851 Highway 66 South. If you want to support us, you can go to our website, firmfoundationoutreach.org, and you can see there's a QR code where you can give. We thank God for the time that we have had with you. You be blessed in Jesus' name. We'll see you right here on this page, right here on this channel, Sunday at 10 a.m., Wednesday, 7 p.m. Be blessed in Jesus' name.